In this video, we're going to go over frame constraints, which tends to be a bit confusing, especially for beginners in Figma. So let's clear up any confusion about this and learn what this feature is about and when you should use it. So frame constraints, as the name suggests, is related to frames. And specifically, they are related to objects within frames. So if I use this frame as a parent element for a rectangle, which I'm going to draw right now, right? So this is our rectangle, I'm going to make it blue. So when I click on this rectangle, you can see that we get constraints on this side of the interface right here. So what does it mean? When I select this frame and then resize it, you can see that this rectangle is moving alongside with it, but in a very special way, right? So it's not getting scale, it's not getting moved. It just sticks to the top left corner. And that is no coincidence because frame constraints for this rectangle are set to left and top. So this means that this rectangle is going to stick to the top left of this frame, right? Similarly, if I were to set this to right and bottom, you can guess probably what's gonna happen, right? So if I set this to right and bottom and then I resize the frame, this happens, right? It becomes basically glued or its position is being calculated relative to the bottom and right edge of the frame. But then additionally, what I can do, I can not only set right, left, top and bottom, I can also position the rectangle into the center and then set constraints to center and center. This will make sure that when we scale our frame, this rectangle is gonna stay in the center, right? So that, you know, it always corresponds to the names of these constraints, that makes sense, right? So this is center and center. And then finally, we also have scale and scale. And remember, these can be set independently. So this is the horizontal kind of behavior and this is the vertical scale behavior, the vertical uh, resizing behavior. So if I set this, you know, vertically speaking to top and then horizontally to center, this is gonna happen, right? So when I resize this horizontally, it's gonna stay in the center, but when I resize this vertically, this rectangle is gonna stay stuck to the top side, right? So you can combine these independently. Anyway, let's examine what does scale mean. So scale means when set up uh, under frame constraints, when you scale the frame up, let's say, make it uh, twice as big in terms of width, this element is going to become twice as big in terms of width, right? So it simply scales alongside with the frame, okay? Vertically, it's basically the same, right? So it, it's as if you created a group and then just you scaled all of these objects together, right? So that's also possible. And then, and then finally, so we went through left, right, top, bottom, and then scale and center. So the only thing that remains now is left and right, right, this option, and then top and bottom. So this is a bit complicated to explain, but let me just show you, right? So let's say I have this rectangle that goes from left to right, and the distance from edges is 60, right? So it's 60 from the top and then from the left and right. And then let's consider a second rectangle that has exactly the same properties, but we are going to left this one at scale and top, whereas the first one is going to be left and right and top. Now, the first impression that you might get from this setup is that left and right and then scale means the same, but that's not the case though, right? So if we now resize this horizontally, watch what happens. So when I make this approximately twice as big, you can see that the first rectangle is still 60 points distant from the left and right. Whereas the second one, because it was set to scale, is now 160.98 and then 160.98. Basically setting this up to left and right will consider what's the distance from each edge and then it's going to anchor the behavior to that property basically. So if you set this rectangle to left and right, Figma is going to be like, okay, so 60 points from the left, 60 points from the right, maintain left and right, got it. So it's going to be 60 from the left and 60 from the right at all times. But then with the second one, 
that's being resized and scaled, including the spaces. That's the key difference. You can see how the space changes with the second rectangle, but with the first rectangle, it's being maintained. So that's key. And then also keep in mind that as soon as I turn this back to left and right, second one, the behavior is identical with these two. But then when I go back to scale for the first one, then that's, you know, the difference is clear, right? So I hope this makes sense. And now why don't we use an example? Why don't we create a sample mini project to demonstrate these features? So let's consider a website, okay? Let's consider a website uh, that will have a header. Let's make this header blue for now. And if you get a website header, then what is specific about a website header is that it stretches to the full width of the website. Maybe sometimes you get websites that have like a tiny bit of you know, padding on the sides in terms of the header, but usually you just get you know, going it from left to right and being being kind of placed at the top. And then you also get a logo, right? So let me create a logo. And then you get, let's say, some menu items. Okay, so we have these objects we just randomly placed onto our screen. And then let's say we have these two random objects, right? In, in the background that are also gonna be blue, but partially transparent, right? So they're gonna be like this. And we wanna determine that they are always gonna be approximately one quarter of the width. So that's 858 times 0.25, right? So 858 times 0.25. So they're gonna be 214 points when at this size, then they're gonna scale proportionally as the whole page changes size. So how do we set this all up? So let me now duplicate this and show you the behavior that we get now. We get this, right? This is totally broken and doesn't really make any sense. This is not the behavior that we need. Fortunately, we can use frame constraints and then make sure this rectangle is set to left and right, which is which it already is in this case, right? Uh, but then with these menu items, you can set all of them to right and then top, right? Because you wanna make sure they stay in this place relative to the top right corner. And then we wanna go for left and top for the logo. And then we wanna go for scale horizontally on these objects. So that's scale. And then also top or maybe top and bottom on the vertical resizing. And now let's compare the behavior. In terms of responsiveness, this is kind of useless. But this, however, what we just created, I mean, this is way better, right? This works as intended. These two objects are always at 25% width and then also this padding right here is maintained. So as you can see, we get this behavior along with the header, which is gonna scale as well, right? Left and right and then top. And also these menu items that are glued to the right and top and then the logo, which behaves as expected. So this is how we can use frame constraints to uh, basically create these semi-responsive layouts basically to specify how these objects within frames should behave. And overall, this is just, this is the huge advantage of using frames over groups because you can choose how these objects behave. So consider that, to duplicate this, consider this a group, right? We would have this group and we would also create a background for this maybe that's gonna be, that would be like white and then make sure all of this is contained within one group, right? If we resize this group, this happens, it, it's being deformed and not really what we need, right? This is not what we need when creating UIs. And you can see you have no option to set, you know, set any of this in, in basically group mode. You need to have the frame mode where you can select how these individual objects behave and then adjust that to whichever mode or whichever behavior you need. But then also, if you wanna get the same behavior as the group, you simply select all of these and then go to scale and then scale and you get the same behavior as the group, right? So. Basically, I argue that it's always better to use frames because you can choose how the objects within these frames behave. So this feature is obviously especially useful for designing UIs, 
but any design that basically works with, for example, text or objects that should keep their, you know, a specific place within a layout, then frame constraints are gonna be very useful. Hopefully this video helped you understand this powerful feature. Let me know in the comments if everything's clear. Also leave a like if you found this video useful and I will see you in the next one.